morning. The real easy. We in the building, man. What's happening with y'all? Rise and shine, man. Wednesday, February 16th. Um, I'm going to get into this Paul Steve Kerr top 15 greatest coaches. You know what I'm saying? Argument. Like, in my opinion, I don't think he's one of the top 15 greatest coaches just because he was a beneficiary, like I always say, of having great players and high IQ guys and high character guys. Now, mind you, you still have to lead them. Like, you get what I'm saying? But they had an Alvin Gentry. They had, you have to understand, it was always a black coach. You know what I'm saying? There was always a black coach on the bench for Warriors at one point or another. It started off with Alvin Gentry. You know what I'm saying? 2015. And the players loved and respected Alvin. You get what I'm saying? Actually, it started off with Mark Jackson. Before motherfucking Steve Kerr even got the squad, the players loved and respected him. It was the ownership that wasn't fucked with him because of all this LGBTQ elemental BS shit. You feel me? That shit. When that agenda hit, who, you know, Mark Jackson, you know, um, very confident and in tune with his faith. You know what I'm saying? Christian man, he was like, uh, -oh. That's cool, but, you know, I'm a straight heterosexual man, boo. So that's not really my cup of for, like, you know what I'm saying, my cup of tea. So, you know what I'm saying, he had a little bit, um, he was uh, objective to the whole shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think he hates, you know what I'm saying, those people, but I just think that he feels the way he feels about, you know what I'm saying? Issue, like, you know what I'm saying, on his, his side. So, with that whole thing, it was some rift between, you know, him and then other coaches came out with sand service and certain stuff, his assistance. And then that's how we got to him ultimately being fired, like, you know what I'm saying? And then every assistant that was under him pretty much got the gig before him, like, you know what I'm saying? And we know Mark Jackson might not be a, a, a super ex and old guys, but a lot of guys aren't. He was more of a um, motivator. You know what I'm saying? He would encourage and motivate and inspire his team, you know what I'm saying, to play a certain way. And you've seen the results. As soon as he came, boop, Warriors been boop, boop for so long. Boop, he took those guys and said, you know what? Why not us? Why not you guys? You know what I'm saying? And he boosted their confidence, boosted the morale, the camaraderie, and the chemistry of the team. You know what I'm saying? And, and really helped create a culture. So that was really all a setup. You know what I'm saying? He was the setup guy. So boom, he set the alley oop. Steve Kerr comes in, dumps it, pretty much. But remember, Alvin Gentry, like I said, started off with Mark Jackson, Alvin Gentry, and then um, from there it went to where they go to. You know what I'm saying? Then it went to Mike Brown. So you want to talk about players, you know, always having a person that they can identify with. You get what I'm saying? And then Steve Kerr is just the guy that's just the face, if that's what you want to call it. It's just like, you know, having, it's just like when you make arguments, LeBron not the greatest. He just the face of this and the face of that, like you know what I'm saying, or whatever, because it's debatable, right? So in my opinion, I don't think Steve Kerr was the right guy for the job, because it's a reason why he didn't take the next job and he took this job. You feel what I'm saying? You would think. You would think. Right? So. So that right there lets me know, like, okay, if you're a good coach, you're going to build an organization and you're going to take players and build a culture, and, you know what I'm saying, and players are going to want to come play for you, you know what I'm saying, as a coach, you feel what I'm saying? Can you imagine if motherfucking Greg Popovich 
approach like the Lakers or the Boston Celtics or uh, like the Knicks or like one of the bigger market teams of Miami, can you imagine you know that Houston? Can you imagine, you know what I'm saying, if motherfucking um, Popovich was coaching one of those teams, how many players would want to come play for somebody like that? The reason why motherfuckers don't want to come play it's the spur, small market. I guess like it's not really, you know what I'm saying, high on people, you know, places to go and travel, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's just, it's San Antonio, like small market. Like it's not like a Houston or Dallas, even though it's in Texas, but still, you feel what I'm saying? So um, that's how I look at that. And, and the reason why. Another reason why I don't feel like Steve Kerr is going to die is because in high pressure situations, I don't think he knows how to coach. Like, you know what I'm saying? He draws up certain plays, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. But shit, anybody, like, you got Egan Dollar and Muffin and Draymond that can draw up a play. It's like, this should be common sense some, most of the time. When you have high and character IQ guys, they see stuff that nobody else sees. So maybe they might tell the coach, yeah, so he's cut right on one moment, then he's going to cheat. Sort of kind of like Kobe, but Kobe had a different mindset. Rest in peace to the mama, you feel me? When he brought out his detail, you know what I'm saying? That was like clever and genius because it gave you, you know what I'm saying, and break down the play and let you see shit before it even developed. And where you can attack and, you know what I'm saying, be aggressive and pick your spots, you feel me? So his mindset was just crazy, and a lot of players don't really—they're not cerebral when it comes to you know thinking the game. You feel me? But this motherfucker Steve Kerr—I don't understand. I just don't think he's the guy. And the Warriors, real talk—I think that train has sailed. Or they—I think that train has that has come and gone. On. They need to move on from Steve Kerr. Yes, I said it. Period. Point blank. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what the Warriors' record is. You feel me? I can just tell that certain shit ain't right. Because remember when them motherfuckers was in the uh? Remember how he did certain players? Like certain players would get mad at Steve Kerr, and you can say the frustration when they get subbed out the game. His substitutions are off. He keeps changing minutes for guys talking about he's trying to find the right this and find the right that like motherfucker you're supposed to be building up your players you know what I'm saying not motherfucking breaking them down you got players this some players sometimes in the game disengaged and then they come out flat it's like that's a that is a result you know what I'm saying of a coach who's not really respected you know what I'm saying and they don't really want a motherfucking play for a motherfucker. When you see a team that's playing lethargic and doing shit out of character, you know what I'm saying, it's just going through the motions, that mean they gave up on the coach, bro. Just kind of sort of how, like the Lakers situation with Frank Vogel. He could come out of the presser and say, you know what I'm saying, all the right things, but on the court, the Lakers gave up on them motherfuckers, and they don't have a roster. You know what I'm saying? They're just not the top five team in a motherfucking uh, NBA. Let alone Western Conference, so. You know what I'm saying? Steve Curry, he gotta go. Because I remember early on, I, like, you know what I'm saying? A, a motherfucker close to me, who close to the squad, was telling me about how Jordan Poole was this and Jordan Poole was that. But mind you, Jordan Poole wasn't getting no run. It was talking about that he was unhappy. He didn't want to be there. He wanted to go back on Milwaukee. You know what I'm saying? Or Wisconsin. You know what I'm saying? It was talk that maybe, you know what I'm saying, they might look into shopping, you know what I'm saying, Jordan Poole, because he felt that he should be getting playing time, because in practice and in training camp, he was the best player hands down, in practice, in training camp, you know what I'm saying, and a lot of players, you know what I'm saying, can <laughs> vouch for that, and they'll even tell you that this motherfucker worked his ass off, like, you know what I'm saying, and that's where it started. So with that being said, it's like, nigga, why don't you develop your young talent? Why don't you let them play, get them some experience? Like, you give them two minutes, three minutes, sort of kind of like Tom Thibodeau. That's why I feel Tom Thibodeau got to go. It's all ego, bro. These motherfucking coaches, they too prideful. They have way too much ego. 
There's no reason why your main guy should play 50 and 40 minutes, nigga. You got young talent, bro. Playing. What the fuck you trade? Why did you trade for Cam Reddish just to play him two minutes a game? When he was averaging damn near 13 points, 14 points. You know what I'm saying? With Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? When he got more playing time. It just, that don't make no sense to me, bro. You have a talent like that. You got to play him. I don't give a fuck about it. none of that other shit. Oh, he you know, for, for working my system. Fuck your system. Nigga, it's basketball, bro. This shit ain't rocket science. Nigga, it's fucking basketball, nigga. So, if that's the case, nigga, a motherfucker will figure that shit out. Like, nigga, ain't no systems that motherfucking complicated to play for. Ball movement, body movement, nigga. Dribble, dribble, dribble. Pass, pass, pass. Shoot the motherfucking ball, nigga. What's the fuck is so hard about doing all that? Come on, man. Motherfuckers is smart enough to understand how to play the game, bro. These coaches make this shit super complicated. You know what I'm saying? And then that's what causes them to have poor records on the basketball floor. And then they don't have the personalities to coach. You get what I'm saying? Their personalities be whack. That's why they be needing all these other assistant guys who's a little bit more mild-mannered and a little bit more open-minded and shit. Because these other motherfuckers be uptight, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, nigga, you supposed to, you supposed to go about your business, like, in a professional way, to be serious, but, nigga, it's not that deep, though, bro. You want to connect with your players so you can get the best out of them, so they can respect you and what the things that you're trying to bring, you know what I'm saying, to the team or organization. You feel me? And that's why I say Steve Kerr, I don't, it's time for him to go, bro. Him, I, Steph Curry got angry the other day. That game against the Clippers when they got blown out, nigga, he was mad when he came out the game. At one point, you could see him on a bench. I was just like, I see. I've been seeing this shit. Steph Curry been really holding back. Niggas really been holding back. You seen it that time in that OKC game, niggas, some years ago when motherfucking Steph Curry got mad. I mean, uh, when Draymond Green had that riff with the coaching staff in the locker room. Because they told that nigga not to shoot anymore. And then all of a sudden, nigga just lost his motherfucking shooting powers. You know what I'm saying? And that was in the middle of the game, bro. These niggas be trying to control these motherfuckers and hold these motherfuckers back. This shit is like a plantation, bro. This shit just like the NFL, nigga. You going to do what the fuck I tell you to do. I don't give a fuck if you're talented and all this and that and all this and that. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And now they're just trying to control motherfuckers. You see what Philadelphia organization, I don't know if that's like a cult-like organization or what, but every number one pick or every player that comes through there, they fuck them over, bro. And they be psychologically and mentally like distraught. I'm like, what the f what's going on with this Philly shit, bro? They can't, all them dr number one drive picks and shit. You know what I'm saying? Them motherfuckers tried to back, break Allen Iverson. You remember that shit? They tried to do AI the same way, bro. And then Iguodala came up over there. Like, you feel me? And then after that, it was Drew Holiday was over there. Like, you feel me? They didn't have some good, great players. They could have built championships a long time ago, but it's something about that organization that I don't know if that shit works. And this is outside, like, the fan base and stuff. Like, you feel me? Because the media's cold motherfuckers don't the way they paint shit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and then see what they did to Markel Fultz. You see what they did to Markel Fultz? Bro, they fucked that man's whole career off, bro. Number one pick. Motherfucker was shooting in college. Okay, they try to change the motherfucker whole motherfucking game up, bro. His whole jumper and shit. You know what I'm saying? Which fucked his confidence up. They keep drafting these motherfuckers who can't shoot. I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, and then get mad when they don't shoot in the games. I'm like, nigga, where your player development staff at and shit, bro? Ain't that's what they for? Certain trainers and shit. Like, you drafting motherfuckers who just don't have a mindset that I want to be the greatest. Nigga, that's why you have to have great front office personnel to make these type of decisions on draft night, bro. It's like you drafting with the intent for what? What do you what do you want to be? Where do you want to go? 
It don't make no fucking sense, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then look what they did to Ben Simmons. Nigga was say, say he was all fucked up mentally. The nigga was double and triple talking, nigga. He didn't really want to throw the team under the bus in his pressure yesterday. The nigga was just talking around shit. Trying to make it seem like, oh, it's been a lot of things uh, accumulated over the years. And, uh, okay, nigga, well, just say what it is, man, nigga. Period. The fuck is it? Nigga, don't hold back. These niggas are scared, bro, because they want to be liked so bad. And they care about what they peers and shit think about them. Instead of just being honest with your true feelings. That's why niggas got mental health issues, nigga. You're holding back shit, bro. Once you sit in all of that misery and all of that with guilt and all of that motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Sorrow and frustration. If you sit in that shit, you become that shit. You need to release all of that shit so you can move on, bro. It's like, what the fuck? These niggas, bro, I don't, I don't be understanding, bro. It is what it is, nigga. Everybody ain't gonna like your motherfucking ass. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? Don't, but don't stop being you. Nigga. You ten toes down up in this motherfucker, bro. You know what I'm saying? Stand on your motherfucking shit, nigga. They might not like you, but they gonna respect that shit for sure, for sure, nigga. And then go about your business. Period. Go to play. But nigga, this shit. Like, this shit weird, bro. So back to this motherfucking Steve Kerr shit, bro. This organization, I don't know, bro. I said this shit a long time ago. Even though I'm optimistic, I'm always a guy that try to, you know what I'm saying, think optimistically. Shit. I said it. I say this little five year run or whatever, this might have been the last, that might have been the last year. That 2019 championship might have been the last year that the Warriors will ever see another championship. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion. Just because I'm watching how the organization is making certain moves, bro, and it's just like, okay, I see what's going on. They they, they just want to build that fan base up moving to San, San Francisco because it's just a different culture. It's a different environment. It's a different feel. You feel me? It's a lot more It's a lot more like billionaires and high power motherfuckers going to the games as opposed to when you were in Oakland, the culture was way different. It's like, nigga, they, the, the Warriors fed off of the energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it was just like, that shit, it was just like organic. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they adopted a culture like, nigga, you come up in here, nigga, we throwing them blenders on you. Period, point blank. Straight up. Like, nigga, we ain't playing with you. We ain't doing none of that, nigga. We gonna blow your ass out, nigga. And we gonna make it exciting and entertaining. So, now that they move to get a new stadium, every time you get a new stadium or something, it's always about the money. Look what they did with the Rams. You know what I'm saying? Shift to football. Look what they did with the Rams. Think about it. Look what they did with the fucking Rams and the Chargers, bro. New stadium. Super Bowl. All of a sudden, held in that building. Now... They win the Super Bowl, like you feel me? But that's all for the bread, bro. You know, you think motherfucking LA Rams is a dynasty, nigga? Come on, bro. They not about to be winning like that, nigga. They just trying to that shit for the money, make it more attractive. Like, you know what I'm saying? A halftime show. You feel me? They're gonna have hella events there. Hella shit is gonna start taking place there, just like uh, you know, when the 49ers, you know, moved from motherfucking Candlestick and Three Com. They moved over to the motherfucking Santa Clara, bro. Ain't nobody like. Come on, bro. Santa Clara, nigga. Ain't nobody fucking with Santa Clara out here like that. The only time nigga fuck with Santa Clara is to go to Great America, nigga. That's it. It ain't nothing out in Santa Clara. But all of a sudden, you've seen after a couple of years, they start having different events, ball games and shit. Because they had to make up all that money that them motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, was in debt. You know what I'm saying? My brother was in that fucking with these new stadiums and shit. They gotta make all that money back and some. You feel me? Workers wasn't getting paid and shit, so. This shit. That's the game, bro. That's the motherfucking game. And I know I be going off, though, but try to keep this shit in perspective, bro. This shit is all about money and control. Every time. Steve Kerr ain't no 
hell of a motherfucking motherfucker. He's sitting there trying to take. I, the only thing I give to him over Steve Nash is that he had more experience in an executive role. His role with Phoenix. You know what I'm saying? His role with Phoenix, he had more of an executive role. So he was up close and personal at the games. You feel what I'm saying? And then his experience being around Popovich, playing for Popovich. And then his experience being around, you know what I'm saying, Chicago Bulls organization, playing with Jordan and Pippen, and, you know what I'm saying, and playing for Phil Jackson and those and those squads. You know what I'm saying? So he has a little bit of experience, but is he an LFI coach? Hell no. He went from executive straight to coach. He didn't have no prior coaching experience. They tapped him over hella other motherfuckers that was qualified for the position. Just like Steve Nash in Brooklyn. He went from player development consultant with the Warriors to head coach. It's a difference, bro. That don't, you're not a head. You wasn't on the bench, nigga. He was in the background. And then all of a sudden, he just become a head coach. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the face. You feel me? He's the face. And then that's why they put like a D.N. Tony. Then they brought Amari Stoudemire in as an assistant. You know what I'm saying? It's certain motherfuckers of Jacques Vaughn or whoever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? To relate to the players, nigga. To relate to the players, bro. Because you know D'Antoni relates to the players. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers wasn't respecting no motherfucking Steve Nash. They didn't even like that nigga as a player, nigga. So don't tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker was qualified for shit. These motherfucking coaches these days don't put no work in, nigga. When you got the Steven Silas's and the J.P. Bickerstaff's and the Nate McMillan's and the Brian Shaw's, motherfucker. I mean, it is no reason, nigga, why Brian Shaw should not have a head coaching job right now. He's been an assistant, nigga, for damn near, nigga, 15, 16 years, nigga. Since he retired, nigga, he became assistant, nigga. Come on, man. You mean to tell me he not qualified, nigga? Come on, bro. That's bullshit, bro. That is straight bullshit, nigga. I'm trying to see. Motherfuckers don't be understanding how this shit works. The point of the fucking matter is, nigga, Steve Kerr gotta go, bro. It's time for a new face. We move to a new place, nigga. New energy. New leadership, nigga. You feel me? That's the way it is. It's been some shakeups, nigga, in the front office. Certain people been, you know what I'm saying, stepping down or retiring and moving away. And certain people been, you know what I'm saying, moving up the ranks and being put in a position of power. You feel me? So they've been juggling some shit. You know what I'm saying? So at one, at some point, you just have to change the leadership, bro. Because sometimes when that shit runs out and players stop respecting motherfuckers, and you can tell by motherfuckers' energy and play on the court, you know what I'm saying, and their reaction, you know what I'm saying, during the games, when they come out, when they're substituted, you feel me? <laughs> Late game situation, motherfuckers be like, man, this, I don't know, man, This it seems like there's something going on in the Warriors organization behind the scenes, but they just trying to keep that shit under wraps. But watch what I tell you, nigga. It's, it's going to be a report, you know what I'm saying, coming out talking about, you know what I'm saying? If the Warriors don't win no championship this year, I guarantee they're going to be talking about, uh, I don't know, it's been some talk about, you know, Steve Kerr's contract and whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you know what I'm saying? I guarantee those talks are going to start coming up. Watch what I tell you. You know what I'm saying? If not sooner than later, I, I guarantee that. You feel me? So, that's what it is, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't with all the bullshit, man. These motherfucking coaches and these organizations and player, you know what I'm saying? And these uh, front office executives and shit. These motherfuckers be on some bullshit, bro. These motherfuckers be on some bullshit, bro. Straight up. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about that. Let me know what y'all think, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, share, subscribe, you know, fuck with your boy, you feel me? Get them likes up, get them views up, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Come fuck with your boy, holla at your boy, man. Right? Real easy, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Make sure you love, live life, smile, cry, laugh, fuck with your people, period, man. Right? You know what I'm saying? 
straight up. Y'all have a blessed day. You already know I'm gonna kick back later.